Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas of Beverly Hills here in Los Angeles. And I wanted to talk to everyone today a little bit about the impact of Graves' disease treatment on dry eye. One thing that I want people to know is that patients with thyroid eye disease ha often have very severe dry eye. And that's because the disease attacks the gland that produces tears and other circumstances such as radioactive iodine can also dramatically decrease the tear production. And I'll show you several slides of how this occurs. And you can see one is that the lacrimal gland and the tear film of just how that's formed. And the tears are both a fluid, but they also have a fatty layer too that protects them from evaporation. So it's a quantity of tears that are produced or actually decreased in Graves patients, but also a quality of tears. And there are several ways of testing for this. And one is to see and to look at the cornea and to notice if there's any evidence of little scratches on the cornea. And you can do this with a dye. And we can also put a little piece of paper inside the eyelid and test to see how many tears are actually producing. So once we know if someone from, with Graves' eye disease has decreased tears, and if it's very severe, we can often tailor that and to try to augment that with artificial tears and various supplements. And we'll talk about those ideas in other segments and other videos, uh, which you can search on our YouTube channel. What I want to speak about specifically today is what is the effect of radioactive iodine on tear production and tear quality. And one of the things that we've seen in the past is that Graves' disease and patients with a Graves' disease have larger tear glands. And at first you'd think that, well, a bigger gland means you produce more tears. Well, actually it's because there's extensive scarring in this gland. And unfortunately, the scarring and the autoimmune process destroys a lot of the tear producing cells. And what's more is when you have radioactive iodine, the radioactive iodine is actually taken up by these cells in addition to the thyroid, which is aimed at killing, but it's taken up by the lacrimal gland and unfortunately reduces the tear production even further. So in many patients, the tear differences and what's happening is that you're producing fewer tears if you've had radioactive iodine and Graves' disease. It's kind of like a double whammy. One way of thinking of that and planning for that actually is to take and to use artificial tear supplements and certainly omega-3 and omega-6 supplementation. So this often occurs in the lacrimal gland, but, which is the tear producing gland, but it can also occur in the salivary gland. So patients who have our radioactive iodine can often get dry mouth too. And there are several studies that patients, about 30 to 40% of people within the first six months of treatment will have significant problems. So if you've just had radioactive iodine, it's certainly something for you to think about and to supplement. Most of the time, this goes away after a year, but it can linger for, for many patients. So, there's a variety of evidence, but I want you to at least know that the iodine-131 is taken up by a variety of other tissues, and that this can produce dryness, both the lacrimal gland and also mouth dryness. Something to think about when you're considering thyroid options.